today we want to bring to a close our teaching on the subject of preparation for um, West African Faith Believers Convention that's Wafbeck. And uh, let's take a confession before we do that. Want to go. As I sit to listen to the word of God today, a door of utterance has been opened unto us, and I hear the voice of God clearly speaking to me. This is the way to go, walk ye in it. I listen under the influence of the Spirit of God, and I'm not distracted by anything or anyone. The word of God is full to my spirit. I am strengthened by it this morning. It is wine to my heart, creating joy within me. It is oil to my face, causing my life to shine, giving me victory in everything that I do. As my eyes make contact with the scriptures used in this message, the Spirit of God opens new things to me. He also brings to my remembrance things Jesus once showed me. I come to understand God's system on the earth, and I receive instruction, encouragement, correction, and the enablement to live out God's will. Amen. Amen. All right, we've spoken about um, intercessory prayer, praying for ministers, praying for people. And today I want to zero in on your own personal preparation for the meeting. In other words, how to put your own self in uh, the best position to be able to receive uh, all that God has for you in the meeting. So I'm talking about personal, your personal approach to it. Let me reiterate again that they should not just be confined to um, the conference, but it should be something that you use going forward in preparing for church services, in, in you, all right, preparing for church services, or, you know, going for a conference, whatever it is, and it is even adaptable to other things. But it's something that should be, all right, as it is going forward. Last week, we read uh, the testimony of uh, the lady who believed for her healing, and essentially she used these principles in order to receive an impartation of healing power during, all right, the anointing service. And the service wasn't even designed as, an, as a healing service. And I cannot remember whether or not any prophetic utterance on purpose in the one before the last one spoke to the healing of the body. But it's what she drew out of it because that's what she released her faith for in the same way Jesus didn't consciously release his faith for the healing of the woman with the issue of blood. She was the one who released her faith, all right, into Jesus Christ and drew out of him uh, what he wasn't even aware that somebody came because of that until virtue and power left him. All right, so I want to look at this personal preparation. How do you as a person prepare personally for a meeting? Uh, we've said you have got to be, number one, intentional about it. You have got to come, all right, intentionally to God. Now you understand that God does have things on his own heart that you have no knowledge about that he also wants to do. But any, uh, what we must understand is that he uses the very things that we are aware of. In other words, the things that make us thirst for the power and the wisdom of God, that's the same place and the same point of entry for him to do that which he actually wants, all right, to do that we have no knowledge of. In other words, uh, Peter called all night and caught nothing. 
uh, their desire was to catch fish. And that was the point of contact for Jesus to take them also into that which he called them to do from the foundation of the world. So he uses our needs as his own point of contact to reveal things beyond just meeting our needs. Having met our needs, he also now goes and unveils eternal things. So number one, be intentional. Number two, as simple as this is, it must be done. Take to God the three things that you want out of the meeting. Personally present them to God in prayer and ask that he direct the anointing to, all right, speak to those things or touch those things in the release of power. Now, you have to ask him in deliberately for that. As simple as it is, you will be surprised that many people don't open up to God as their only source. Now, he uses different channels, but only source in a prayer. All right, so meet the pressing issues within their lives. It is common practice that man will go down to Egypt for help and not come to God and take counsel at the mouth of God concerning those things. So take them to God in prayer that he might direct the anointing into that particular area. Now, we've seen in Romans chapter 10, I want to show this here, verse 11, I want to show what happens. Quickly, Romans 10, 11 to 18. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And then he says, there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of of the Lord shall, not may, shall be saved. See, it ain't say, it's just like saying, whosoever we pour water on shall, all right, be wet. That you take water and you pour a bucket of water on a person, the person gets drenched. It, the person may, it's not a question of the person may or may not, the person will be drenched there and it will be visible. So it says, whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall, not may, shall be saved. I was going to say, well, I called on the name of the Lord. Then it tells us what it means to call on the name of the Lord. Now look at it as it goes on here. How, does, how should, then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom, all right, they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now, go to verse 8 again. Let's just read it again. Verse 8. Sorry, not verse 8. Verse 11. Verse 11. The scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now, next verse. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord is rich unto all those that call upon him. Verse 13. And whosoever calls upon him shall be saved. But initially it says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And whosoever calleth on him, it says, shall be saved. Now, I want to see what that calling is for. Now, go to the next verse. Let's look at what the calling is for. And how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? In other words, anybody who calls on God has believed something. And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And then he says, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. So, 
whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. But you cannot believe except you hear. And you cannot hear right except somebody is sent to you to preach. So if somebody is sent to you to preach to you, you are going to believe. And if you believe, you will not be ashamed. See, let me say what I'm saying again. If somebody is sent to you, if you hear, it's different. But if somebody is sent to you to preach, you are going to believe. And if you believe in your heart, right, the way he says believe here, you are going to see the power of God in operation in your life. So the condition is somebody must be sent to you. I, mean, I said this one time I prayed and fast, Kenneth Hagin said, he, was, he had been praying and preaching to, and preaching and preaching and preaching to an uncle of his. And the man did not get saved for years, almost like 10, 11 years. And then he, one day he was reading and the scripture said, pray the Lord of the harvest that he may send forth laborers into the harvest. So God told him, instead of preaching to him, pray that somebody be sent to preach to him. He prayed that and the man got saved within the week because a sent person preach to him, not just that, somebody just preached to him. Are, are you seeing what I'm saying here? So the prayer saying that somebody to be sent to you will almost make manifestation of God's power in your life almost the default thing if somebody is sent to you. Right, that's what we want to see here. That's why it tells us in Isaiah 30 and verse 15, Isaiah 30, verse 15. In return and rest shall you be saved. All right, let's go to verse 19. Uh, the Bible says, For the people that dwell at Zion, thou shalt weep no more, but he will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. Now, it's a cry for somebody to be sent to you. That's the cry. That's why in this salvation plan of God, he always, God is the source, but he raises people there. He raises, that's why not holding the head from which all the body through joints and bands have nourishment ministered. Now you are holding to the source, but the only way it's going to be ministered is not going to come directly from source, it's going to come through joints and bands. So look at what he says here. Let's go now, all right? He will be very gracious on the voice of the head when he will hear it. He will answer thee. Now, what's the cry? Though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but your eyes shall see your teachers. And your, so the teachers were already there, but your prayer now brought them to your consciousness. And you shall hear a word, put it there, behind this say, your ear shall hear a word behind this say, this is the way to go, walk ye in it and it will result in the bread of the increase of the earth. So how do you get people sent? Because if a sent person speaks to you on a subject, that sent person will shift you from unbelief into the practical outworking of faith that will lead to result if somebody is sent. But it is not dependent on the anointing of the person. It is dependent on the prayer of the person that the anointing be directed. Because Jesus said, before you say physician heal thyself, he says, how come Elijah was only sent to the widow there at Zarephath? And how come Elisha was only sent to the leper in that place? They were anointed, but they were only sent, all right, to certain people. What makes them sent? The person must understand in their heart the role of a sent one. They must understand. That's why Jesus said, your house is left unto you desolate. He said, because you stoned the prophets and those that were sent, which means that's the only way help can come. 
Divine help comes through human vessels into your life. And once you don't understand that, and you are trying to operate this system, just you and God, without the involvement of people in your life, you cut off the supplies of God. Nothing happens. Are you following what I'm saying? There's one I, I, yesterday I, I, I said, I sent a message to somebody, and then I called the person, and because the person didn't reply, so I called the person. I told the person, please, will you check your message? And my wife said, why didn't you just tell him the message? I said the same reason why the angel, too, came walked to Cornelius and said, send for one job. Why didn't the angel just say the message? Say, love, it's everything. You turn into the, what? It's the same thing, all right? Okay? Which means that, God, why don't you just say it? No, he will send somebody to you. That's the order. Now, if you don't understand that order, then it means that there's, because you, God, God does it that way so that nobody is exalted. There's no pride and self-exaltation. There's nothing like I'm the one that he, he has that system in check so that you are humble. All right? Because once there is that, if he does that direct revelation to you like he did to Paul, Paul said, listen, I began to grow wind. He had to use the messenger of Satan to try to bring humility into his life. So how do you get someone sent? Quickly. Exodus 3, verse, verse 4 to 10. Exodus 3, verse 4 to 10. I want to show you the importance of this. Now, when the Lord saw this, this Moses now, the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God called him. So if you are believing for something, all right, just pray to God. God, send forth somebody to me that will speak your words into my life concerning this. He might either send the person physically, all right, or may send books to you. Because Paul himself said, what I was by word through letters, so shall I be when I am bodily present. Which means that his letters or his books carried his anointing and it was personified in those books. So you can use books to get it across you. But that's the way you should pray. And you will shorten, all right, the time of manifestation because then you are going to get the relevant knowledge that will switch your heart to a place of faith and then you'll be able to appropriate it within, all right, your life. And that's the way God does the system here. So Exodus 3 here, 4. So the bush was born in, and he turned aside, and he also humbles the minister too. To see, and God called him out of the midst of the bush, and Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. And then he said, draw out nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. And then verse 6, moreover he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and Moses hid his face, and he was afraid to look upon God. And verse 7, the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. I have heard their cry by reason of the taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. All right? I am come down to deliver them. God said, I, I, I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land Unto a good land, a large one, a land flowing with milk and honey, a place where the Canaanites and all the folks were. So he was bringing them out of bondage, and this is how God does it every time. He brings you out. Now, they didn't know about that. All they wanted is deliverance, but God was fulfilling a prophetic purpose that he had given in a covenant with Abraham 400 years before. And I'm saying that with every need that you cry to God, he fulfills that need, but goes beyond that and enters into a prophetic program that he has from the foundation of the world. So he was saying that to them, okay? Now look at the next verse here. And then he said this, Now therefore, all right, behold, I've seen, I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore. Now, God said, I have come down. But what did God do? He said, come now, therefore, and I will do what? Send you. So Moses 
was in the stead of God for the children of Israel. Reject Moses, you reject God. Finish. That's where the salvation was. You cut Moses off, you cut God off. So he said, I send. So when he sent, all right, which means that it is a manifestation of Christ in your life when somebody is sent to you. That's what happened. And speaks a word. It's different from just hearing preaching, you know, and speaks a word. And what causes a person to be sent is that that person, that's why Cornelius, your prayers and your arms have come as a memorial. Peter was sent to him. That's why when Peter was preaching, even before he finished the message, the Holy Ghost fell on them. You get those results when people are sent to you. So you take it up to God and present it before him and then ask him that he should send, all right, his anointing into your life to speak to you concerning it. Now, see what happens when the anointing comes. You know, Moses had tried to do it before when he was called. He messed up. It was, this is the time he was sent. Acts chapter 7, verse 35. Moses, to whom they refused, said, Who made the ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel that appeared unto him in a bush that was burning. So, it was an angel that now went. Now, that angel, when we uh, look at the angel there, we'll find out that that same angel now guided them and said, hearken to his voice because he's the one that now went. So, it was angelic activity that we actually saw in the ministry of Moses and that angel came as a result. So, what happens is an angel actually is released and that angel causes you to hear the voice of God as the minister is speaking and the voice of God is heard clearly by you and you now know. You don't just hear the word, you hear the voice of God, which means you get specific instructions concerning it and the matter gets settled in that all the power of God is released from it. All right? So pray that way, understanding that it is people that will be sent all right, to you as a person. So when God wants to change the seasons in your life, he sends, all right, something, an anointing into your life. Send somebody, all right, into your life and the changes come. That's why people that don't really regard people and don't understand the power of those things, all right, they don't get into it. All right, step number two, all right, number three here, spend time praying about people that you will invite also physically and online. Because you've got to understand you also now have to be sent, so you have to start praying about it. Don't just do it naturally. Now, I want, I want to sh say something here, and this is the way you do it. And God showed me. He actually showed me. He said, this is the first time in my life I've ever seen this. He said, this is how they should do it. God gives a strategy. God's strategy is not expensive, very impactful, very effective. All right? He says, this is the strategy. I was telling, I said this in the midweek services, and then I also said it to the prayer meeting we had, that look, we can now, we have gone fully into full-scale mode now, into pushing the meeting out into the consciousness of people, billboards are coming out, all of that, after we finished the prayer and fasting, now we now went into because we've explained that fasting and prayer is like the Air Force. Now you can release ground troops because you have done that. So we start doing that. So in this strategy, now we can make a lot of noise, okay? And noise is not the issue. I mean, they just finished Shiloh. They just finished Redeemed. Those are the largest Christian gatherings probably in the world today, okay? At least Redeemed is the largest fiscal gathering of Christians in the world today. I don't think I saw any advert noise anywhere, all right? Because they have a quiet structure that they use in bringing people in. Their net is strong. That's what, that's, they have a net that is strong, that pulls people out of everywhere in the globe into the meeting without. The net is strong. 
Now, in order to build that kind of net there and to bring people in that God wants, I can make noise, but that's not the way. So what he says is, people shouldn't just invite people naturally. Ask God to guide you, all right, and, and pray about it. The Lord, and there's something about you, all right, bringing people in. I just don't want to go too much into that. But when Job prayed for his friends, his captivity was turned around. Now, bring people in. You could be in prayer and he could flash in your consciousness people that you have known in the past and maybe you haven't even been in contact with them too much and all of that. But prayer, look, everything, everything that works in the covenant works because you tabled before God and God suggested to you what to do. Let me repeat, everything that works, works on the basis of the voice of God, not human intelligence. Everything that works in this covenant is because your head, and that hearing is not that you heard a voice speaking to you, but something flashed in your consciousness, and you saw it and said, that's it, go and do it. That's what makes it work. Now, or you read in the Bible and thoughts come to you from there. Now, so what you do is you begin to pray. All right, there also may be new people. But tell yourself, I said, if we get everybody inside church today, if we get the congregation as it is now, to bring in five people, okay? Now, it could be online or physical. If it's done without even any adverts, no auditorium will take the people. And online, when you go online, because you can invite people online also, so you can expand it to 10, you can have friends abroad you want to say, come and watch. We'll have at a go. Now, just if you look at it, you'll have at least 20,000 people watching at a go. When you finish the program, you'll realize that by the next day, the real numbers will come out. You'll see 150,000, 200,000 people watching. If, if those people in church, do it. All right? If you just do it, that's just do the network. Okay, you can pray about it and God can even tell you that, look, you can set up something in an area where people, all right, will gather. I mean, if, if, we, if you are if in, in areas, not, not in Lagos, but other areas where people can gather and, and watch or online. Now, but here is the point. This is what you told me to tell people here. When you want to invite a person there, you, know, you don't want to invite someone to attend, you want the ministers to be sent to them. So in your course of conversation with the people, because everything is on base, everything that works, relationship, course of conversation with them, you tell the people that, listen, there is a meeting I believe that the anointing of God will reach you and the power of God will change your life. Do you have three things? You know when people go and say they're going to meet which doctor? You know it's not theory. It's we are going somewhere to solve a problem. That's why people follow them. You don't go and say, I'm going to be a doctor. What to go and do what? He wants to tell me about how. He, no, 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 no. You have a problem. It's also, I mean, you have a problem. Follow me. I know somebody. So it is a power dimension. And I've shown you how it works. Now, if you know the needs of the person or what the person really desires out of the meeting or can get, now you tell the person, give me the three things that you want God to do. Now, you take it up to God on behalf of the person and start praying that God will send. Now, you can do it for people physically and online. So even if you have friends, family, all right there, you can do it online and say, all right, watch it. This is where it is. It's on Wafbeck, uh, YouTube, all right, the West African Faith Believer, and then get it and then pray. Don't just say they should come because you are not just coming. So don't just say, come and hear. Then you say, oh, were well, you impressed by what they said? That's not the issue here. It's the solution to issues in people's lives. So what you do is that you take it up on behalf of the person and say, okay, you are looking for a job. You're all right. I will pray to God. All right. And then you take time to now. Now, when there's a catch here, when you are interceding for other people, you make your own very easy for there to be power to come in to do stuff. That, that's what I want you to understand. All right? Because if you are going by yourself, then it's just by yourself. But when you, you do that, then you make it. So you pray that and then tell them. All right? 
And then, not that you just say it now, you are praying it out of your own heart for that small group of people that you want. So you have this small cell of people that you also are praying daily, God, let them, all right, speak to send, and then you are making the intercession and pray because it was, it was I mean, in God, the friends of, of the man who, who had, was sick, all right, with Paul today, he was the friends that opened the roof, and it was the faith of the friends that God, Jesus saw. The Roman centurion wasn't the servant that was ill. It was the Roman centurion's faith. Uh, the Syrophoenician widow wasn't the daughter. It was the faith, all right, of the wid widow there that she had. So you can use your faith on behalf of other people, and that's when your faith works best. You, you get what I'm saying? All right. I mean, I was saying this about when I put out a promo uh, about um, 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 Word of Faith teachers that, of course, the meeting is a Word of Faith meeting at call, and then it spreads. And the, and, and the, the understanding God gave us is that the Word of Faith is the core of the, of the meeting, all right? Because that message has to be preserved because it's the strongest tool in the body of Christ for personal use, so it has to be preserved. But uh, one of the things that, that must be done to preserve something is that it has to adapt to what is going on in the environment uh, at that particular point in time, or else it will die off. So the word of faith resides at the core. So I have a strong bias for word of faith preachers who, who had grown up there. Now. Okay, even uh, Apostle Grace Lobega that came from, um, that's coming from Uganda, he has a very strong, all right, word of faith bias. Now, so four people, I mean, Pastor Andy Osakwe, um, Nkechene, Pastor Nkechene, Pastor David Gwelly, all right, and um, so, I mean, I, I put it out there that, look, these are people that are coming Okay, in the light of teaching, all right, on the subject of um, the, I mean, the word of faith, in order to to reach, all right, to certain people and to 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 bring them, all right, into the consciousness of what God Himself um, wants uh, to do in the meeting. So let it be a spiritual thing that you are doing and not just a natural invitation, all right, that you are putting up. Now, the point I was bringing was that, about those four people, I'm mostly by mine, all right, uh, was the fact that there's, there's a product of, I mean, God, I mean, Dr. Miles, no man, Dr. Mensah, I said this before, God opens portals at certain times. And in the late 80s, early 90s, he opened up a portal. And, and so ministries come out, and then the portal closes. And then he'll open it up again, and then ministries will come out, and then he'll close the portal. So when he opened up that portal, that time ministries came out, and then he'll shut the portal. Okay? And, um, and that's just the way it is. So he opened the portal at that particular point in time. But one of the things, and I said there were four things that were being done, taught them, meditation on God's word, intercessory prayer, spontaneous worship with the manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit characterized it. But when I said intercession prayer, I left something out. It was intercession for the lost. Most of the prayers that were offered up then in campus fellowship were not for personal needs. We were interceding for people to get saved. That's if you call it meeting now, is let's pray. We must reach the campus. Let's pray. For now, we lost that as we began to go corporate in the sense that people's pressing needs almost overwhelmed intercession there. And so everybody thinks about it in terms of, all right, interceding or getting needs. So the last one, which is very important, it's your giving. Now, the way we do work back and we do our meetings is we don't take offerings every time, okay? I, I don't believe, I mean, this is how God taught me. Not, not anybody, what anybody does, doesn't mean it's wrong. It's what God shows you you do. Doesn't mean that a person or a person is wrong. So we take one single offering because I believe that when you're coming into meetings like this, you should pray to God. And I'll show you the scripture here. Pray to God. And it has to be taught. And these are some of the things that were abused because Satan 
took it into excess, people dropped it, and it, will, it affects things. Now, the real way it's to be done is that people should pray to God themselves. Right? It's not that we come from and say, yeah, in this meeting, I mean, we, we have needs. Nobody has needs. We, 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 there's no, I mean, we don't have any needs in the meeting. Okay? But you pray to God as a person and say, God, what do will you have me give? Don't forget Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide for himself an offering. It doesn't mean God is my provider. It means he'll provide himself an offering. In other words, God is the one who ministers seed to the sower. That's what Jehovah Jireh means. Not El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh. He will provide himself an offering. So you go to God in prayer. The law of giving that works is that nobody must be coerced into giving. If anybody is coerced into giving by pressing needs, then what happens is those offerings are not, because they, there was force that was in, done in it. People should pray and then purpose in your heart. Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 16. God told them there will be three feasts, which is where camp meetings and conventions came. Three times a year shall all your meals appear before the Lord thy God in the place he shall choose, the feast of the unleavened bread, the feast of weeks, and the feast of the tabernacle, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. If you really think about it, it means or else they will go back empty. If you really think about what he's saying there, when he said, don't come before me empty, what he's saying is, or else you will go back empty. So you can't come empty. It is not, all right, you, you don't come there, all right, empty-handed. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to verse 8. But I say, he that so it's fine, shall reap, you that so it's fine, shall it. Now, verse 7. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. You can't interfere with it. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for love, Lord God loveth a cheerful giver. Put the amplified version of verse 7. Amplified version, I think, yeah. Let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purposed in his heart. Not reluctantly, not sorrowfully, not under compulsion, for God loves, he takes pleasure and prizes above other things and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, that's joyous, prompt to do it, giver whose heart is in his giving. Now see what will come as a result of that. The next thing, I've said this, anywhere God tells the person to give, God always says what will happen next. The next verse, he always says what will happen. Look at the next verse. He always says what will happen. Verse 8. And God is able, yeah, listen, go and check anywhere in the Bible where God says, give, help somebody, do something, we'll tell you exactly what will happen next. He's a rewarder. And God will make all grace abound. Now, all grace is tied to giving. You. I'm telling this, all grace, Lester Sumrall said, in the teaching of faith, it wasn't by chance that the first mention of faith was that Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. He said, because that's what opens the door for every other thing to happen. God can work with a person who is stingy and doesn't give. A closed heart, that means you've shut up your bowels of compassion so the Holy Spirit can flow out of you as rivers of living water. So look at what he says. He is able to cause every earthly blessing to come to you in abundance so that you all, all right, may under all circumstances, whatever they need be, right, be able to do that. So go to God in prayer, all right, and ask him that he should tell you exactly what he should give. If God says beyond what you are able to give at that point, then it's God that ministers the seed to the sower. It's not your problem. If he says something that you're able, then tell him, provide the thing and I will give it. And even in providing an offering for you to give is a miraculous thing. It's, it's very huge. 
All right? So you go to him and tell him that. But don't just, it's not just a casual thing, all right? Determine in your heart that this is what God has said and pray about it and you will see, all right, the kind of results that come from that. Also, let me say this. We're going to start a prayer, all right, cycle. Uh, we're going to, and you, you, you go to the website, we'll put it out and you'll get it by Monday, Tuesday. So you can register and take up a day. That's what it's going to be, take up a day. All right, so the whole church is divided into different days. So if you take up Tuesday for praying, all right, on Tuesday for people, and we'll even do it, it'll be global anywhere in the world you want to participate, you can, all right? So you take up a day, which is, say, Tuesday, then we'll give the leader on Tuesday, all right, the whole schedule for Tuesday, so you are praying over each session. You are praying for the worship. You are praying for the ministration. You are praying for the ministers of that day by face and by name. And you are praying through the entire day. Everything, whether it's manifestation of gifts of the Spirit, whether it is um, salvation of souls, whatever it is, you take us up and intercede. So we're going to break it up in, into groups that way. So we maintain and there's continuity in the Spirit towards that. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. I ask by the power of your spirit to cause this to expand within our consciousness and bring forth massive, massive temporal and eternal fruit at Wavec 2023. That it is a celebration of Jesus, a manifestation of the Holy Ghost and days of heaven upon this earth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you all. Amen. All right. Please, we announced, they said I announced it, um, workers' party, which is supposed to be today. Now, based on, on um, circumstances within our control, we don't say beyond our control, within our control, but we had to decide that we will postpone the party all right, um, till January, okay? So it's either it's after the fast or it is before the fast, okay? But there will be a workers' party, all right? It's just that um, today will no longer be uh, feasible, all right? God bless you all. So don't say, because people are telling me that uh, their campus pastors are not giving them, so they are thinking that maybe some politics is going on and they are not. Some people even told me that. They were registered workers. Maybe they got more, yeah, but they moved to a campus, but they've not started participating. It looks like they're not on the register, Pastor, help us. So I just want to tell you that there's no party, not that anything, all right, is happening. God bless you all. <laughs>